You're live, Matt. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Sapala here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And I'm your host of the PHP Agency Podcast. And many of you may recognize my face as a host of the Seven Figure Squad YouTube channel, but my day job, <laughs> my day business, is as a board counsel of PHP Agency, as a chief distribution officer of PHP Agency in the life insurance industry and upon the PHP Agency platform. And my co-host today, join me on episode two of the PHP Agency podcast is former mortgage extraordinaire, Marlene Gaetan. She is also a first generation cash flow millionaire, hailing to you from Santana, California, uh, a leader of the team called TGA and uh, a wife of Jose Gaetan. So Marlene, welcome to the PHP Agency podcast. Awesome. Thank you so much, Matt. And hello to all the PHP family watching across the country. We're super excited to be here this morning. And uh, Matt, I don't know if you know, but I like to call myself the leader of the 50% team of PHP. That has always been my dream since day one. So it's going to come to fruition one day. So super excited to be here with everybody. She's like, she's like, just want to let you know. Of course we know, Marlene. <laughs> of course we know. Again, that's, by the way, for those of you watching, it's called competitive juices, especially today being closeout, end of month closeout, yes. March 31st here at 2021. So uh, Marlene, I'm excited for you because you are the first official co-host of the PHP Agency podcast. And of course you're wearing your team colors. You're wearing red. That's right. So, I'm wearing red. Yes. Patrick made the announcement that I would be co-host. I could not sleep. I was like a little kid. I was excited to learn from you. I mean, I'm learning from Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapala, you know, to learn from you, to get a chance to work alongside with you and to, of course, highlight all the superstars in PHP agency, all the up and comers, all the seasoned veterans, people that are just movers and shakers in the entire industry. It's just such a pleasure. So on the show today, uh, Marley, we're going to, we got a bunch of uh, topics to discuss before we bring on our, our featured guests. But we're going to be talking about women in the insurance business, women in the world of business. We're going to be talking about um, uh, some of the stories I think you uh, um, would like to share from your organization about what happened in terms of a life insurance type of uh, situation. Uh, Jasmine's going to be talking about the racial wealth divide. You know, Plyer's going to be talking about, um, you know, uh, having hope, you know, why hope matters, you know. And, and so, you know, the power of mentorship from Jasmine and how to really recreate yourself uh, as an individual, you know, Marlene, you've recreated yourself as an individual coming from the mortgage meltdown in the 08, 09 uh, Great Recession. And do you have any regrets of ever partaking in yourself inside the life insurance industry? Because I know a lot of mortgage and real estate people are very prideful. Hey, I'm in mortgage and real estate. Do you have any regrets of being part of the insurance industry? I have to pinch myself. I can't believe I'm in this industry. I can't believe I got recruited to PHP agency. I can't believe my mentor is the one and only uh, Patrick Bitt David. I mean, I think, you know, sometimes we have plans and God just has plans that are just so much greater. And I'll never forget 2009. I'm 23 years old. And my mortgage broker says, Marlene, Latinas that do real estate, dime a dozen. Everybody does it. But Latinas that know insurance and investments, there's nobody doing it. And at the time I had a real estate license, I had a notary license, and I just thought, let me get an insurance license, just see what I can learn. I never, if somebody had said, you know, decade later, you'll be a millionaire, you'll have offices across the country. I would have probably walked out thinking, these guys are crazy because I don't come from money. I'm an immigrant from Mexico, youngest of four. My mom was a housekeeper her whole life. My dad was a cook and my parents are visiting. And it's so funny because my dad was reminding me, they asked, you know, does Marlene cook? And my dad said, no, he's a chef for almost 50 years. He said, no, she never learned because when she was little, I used to always say, dad, I'm going to be a millionaire. Like, why do I need to cook? I'm going to be a millionaire. So my dad was just reminding me, right? I, and I think uh, that you got to be a dreamer since you're a kid, but PHP gives you the platform to make those dreams become a reality. And speaking of the, those that you know, platform that makes our dreams a reality, let's let's bring on our featured guest here today. Uh, hailing to you from uh, Culver City, California, also a first generation cash flow millionaire. He's half Puerto Rican, half Mexican. Comes from you from the distinguished career as a server at Red Lobster. <laughs> we have George Ply with us, the founder and leader of Team Unity. George, what's going on, brother? 
What's up, Matt Sampala? I just became Mexican today. I didn't know it. It was it's this is news to me, you guys. I think Matt did it. You did a DNA test on me. You found out I'm half Mexican. And you half just Puerto Rican, half Cuban. On, my my live, half Puerto Rican. <laughs> live on a PHP podcast. The truth comes out, you guys. That's really you know, 51% of PHP is now Mexican. Uh, no, no. Half Puerto Rican, half Cuban, but some other things in there too. Who knows? I stand oh, no. corrected. I stand corrected. We'll be discussing that uh, because I know, uh, you know, of course, you know, as you know, George, Cinco de Mayo is coming up. So <laughs> all good, brother. And also with us from Shy town from Oak Brook, Illinois, at one point in her life, she was a teen mother. She was a teen mother, but she said, you know what? I'm going to fight through the, the, the stereotypes of what uh, goes on with that. And, and she made her way through college She's a former director of communications on Capitol Hill. Uh, she's a very proud Howard alum, HBCU, and uh, now a senior vice president of PHP agency, um, a quarter million dollar income earner, Jasmine Suazo. What's going on, Jazz? I am here. I'm here. Good morning, PHP. And um, Matt, we left out. Not only is it closed out, this is the last day of Women's History Month. So I think yes. it's only right that both Marlene and I are on the second only episode right. of yeah of the podcast. So uh, very, very happy to be here. Excited to be with you all. You know, I, I'm, I'm, by the way, if somebody from the outside, and many of you watching this podcast, you may not be part of PHP Agency, but PHP Agency prides itself on being a very multicultural and diverse insurance marketing organization. And if you look at this podcast right now, you got got Marlene, Mexicana, George, scratch out Mexicano, insert Puerto Rican, Cuban, Jasmine, African American, yours truly, Filipino, doesn't get any more diverse than this. And so I, I'm excited about uh, that. Uh, Marlene, why don't we talk about that real quick since Jasmine brought it up. Uh, Women's History Month this month, uh, uh, in your experience, uh, when it comes to the life insurance industry, I'm not. I'm talking about outside of PHP agency because people think that when they walk into PHP agency, this is what the insurance industry looks like. When you walk into other, when you see other insurance firms, when you see other insurance organizations, we go to visit other insurance um, events when there's, a, you know, predominantly all the life insurance professionals in it. What do you experience when you, as a woman Latina, walk into the room? What do you experience in terms of you being? Uh, a, a person of, 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 of a different gender and a different ethnic background? Well, you know, Matt, when we go to a convention, we get a chance to meet with carriers or other industry professionals. Uh, not only am I one of the maybe one or two women in the room, but I'm one of probably one or two minorities in the room. So it's not diverse. And I do want to give a shout out to our first lady here in PHP, Jennifer Bet David, for creating such an incredible platform for all the ladies in PHP. And I remember when PHP got started, we designed the company in a way where women would have a platform to empower each other, um, you know, but to also have equal opportunity. And I was sharing an article earlier uh, with some of you guys about, you know, how social media has changed the game for women in business because uh, so many women, social media today is the new TV. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I don't know the last time I flipped through channels, but I'm sure for everybody, it's been years, years. So today, the new TV, you know, the new reality TV show is social media. So this article was talking about how women in the life insurance industry, they will tend to leave companies where there isn't a strong social media presence for women, because if we can't see somebody out there that's doing big things that are movers and shakers, we can't envision ourselves growing within that company. And here in PHP, we just, I mean, we have so many incentives for ladies from the ladies trips that we qualify. I know that some of the men get jealous, like how come only the ladies get to go on a trip? But I've qualified for so many trips in PHP. I mean, I'm so blessed to say, we've been around the world but something about the ladies trip is just incredible number one you don't have to take care of your husband or your kids you don't have to worry if they had breakfast or what they're doing or what excursions you just get to take care of yourself but secondly it's the associations you get to hang out with women that are six-figure earners seven-figure earners that are not only incredible business women but they're also 
incredible mothers, incredible wives, and, you know, we grow here in PHP. And something that I really enjoy is that we don't just grow in business, we also grow as women and as individuals. You know, in my organization, we do a lot of marriage seminars, we do a lot of, uh, you know, communication seminars, because uh, we work with so many couples in business. So we really teach women how to build up people around us. And it's so rare because we live in a society where we're told, you know, there's this separation between men and women. And I think it's the complete opposite. It's a partnership. So we really learn how to empower each other and lift each other up. But here in PHP, more than 50% of the company are women. And this alone says so much about the company. The number one earner happens to be an African-American lady here in PHP. So it's definitely an incredible platform for ladies that want to grow. That's that's uh, awesome that you say that. By the way, I always fight every day uh, for my wife to split me on the apps. I send her away because I'm, I'm still trying to go for my watch. You know, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get my 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 I've got goals in 2021. You know, I'm like, babe, my code number is blah 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 blah. She goes, yeah, okay, we'll go say the same account anyway. So it doesn't matter whose name's on it. <laughs> babe, I got goals in 2021. Jasmine, uh, you uh, with, with the three of us on here, you're the most junior in terms of time with yeah. PHP. George is a co-founder. Marlene Gaetan is a co-founder. But you're like with us what two years now? Yeah, uh, and, and you happy you went from. Z- right? Two and a half years. You went from zero training, right? To now a senior vice president with the company and, and, and a a quarter million dollar and above income earner in the company. And what Marley was talking about right here in this article is that uh, there's, there's a a desire to see other women in managerial supervisor and executive roles. And one of the areas that's very important is compensation and promotion and you're, I think you're the perfect example of what it means to say, you know, regardless of gender, ethnic background, if you are willing to do the work, you will be promoted and you will be compensated. Jasmine, your thoughts on that? You know, um, Wall Street Journal released an article on February 6th of this year uh, that uh, essentially is titled, Where Are All of the Women CEOs? And it highlighted the fact that um, women make up more than half of all of the uh, college uh, enrolled students. We make up more than half of the workforce and yet we only represent 6% of executive positions in corporate America. So I think that that's incredibly important Uh, to Mar, you know, Marlene mentioned earlier here at PHP, we're 53% women. Um, And I think my, both my husband and I, our trajectory is a direct reflection Uh, It truly is a direct reflection of the system, the platform that we have here. PHP allows a former director of communications. My husband is an engineer by trade, absolutely zero experience in the industry. Uh, Like many people watching here, we were just looking for a way to make an extra $500 a month. Never in our wildest dreams could we enter into an industry that did not require a college degree. Let me say that. Um, and come in within six months, become agency owners on a part-time basis. Our first 10 months in business, we earned over $100,000 in just a little under three years. Uh, Our rolling 12 right now is $312,000. And so it speaks to the power of our platform here. Uh, It speaks to our leadership development. I think it also speaks, Matt, uh, especially in the midst of a pandemic, being in a recession-proof industry right, um, where the demand for what we do uh, is exceptionally high, but the supply of licensed agents readily available to meet that growing demand is low. And so for women watching here, there is no income inequality. Uh, there, is, there, there are no glass ceilings. There are no invisible walls. Uh, you dictate uh, the value of your time. You dictate the speed in which you can grow because here, not just women, but everyone, we get promoted through performance and not politics. And it's one of the things that I've enjoyed so much building this business for the last two years alongside my husband. So um, while that may be true in other sectors, Matt, it's not true for us here at PHP. George, uh, I want to know your insight on it too, because you have one of the key women in the company in your organization by the name of Cindy Kobos, who just recently crossed over $500,000 in cash flow. Um, what, what has it been like for your experience in working side by side with her after all these years, also her being a former real estate agent, 
Uh, what's it been like for you to help build her along and usher her along? And now she's over five hundred thousand dollars in cash flow. I think I think Cindy's just a phenomenal, you know, uh, person that persevered coming from a family of immigrants, seeing her mom struggle. Um, they're from Ecuador. And so, you know, a lot of times in the Hispanic community, somebody leaves the country first and they go to they come to America, right? The land of all opportunities. And uh, they'll make money and they'll work and they'll send money back home. And so Cindy grew up in, in kind of that family with four kids raised by a, a mom while dad's here in New York working. So when you see your mom be your mom and your dad and, um, you know, you grow up in a poor country and then you get a chance to come here to the United States, you know, of America um, and, and kind of see the big city from Ecuador to New York, you know, it shocks your world. And, um, and I think that, you know, in every family, there's a, a sibling that takes it upon themselves to say, Hey, I want to be the one that changes our family's life. Um, and you want to fix those things. So I think a lot of times people that see pain immigrants, um, do really well in our industry. And, uh, we can talk about that more later, but, um, I remember when we started, Pat used to say, you know, when a guy shows up, when a man shows up at a house to sit at a table with a husband and wife, they see a salesperson. But when a woman shows up to sit at a table with a the family, they see a mom, they see a sister, they see a wife, you know, and uh, it's more nurture. Um, and they don't, they don't, they don't look at that person the same. And last night I was having a conversation with one of my agents. She's one of the, she's the number one uh, distributor uh, for a roofing manufacturing company. And um, she's in PHP part-time um, because she doesn't own her own business. She doesn't own her own book of business selling for other people, even though she's a top salesperson. And uh, she gets in the door where some guys can't get in the door, you mm -hmm. know, because of her personality. So I think women in business do great. And uh, that number is constantly increasing. Uh, Marlene, let's talk about that. Um, I, I remember in 2010, Allianz, a life insurance company uh, based out here in, in Minnesota. Allianz came out with a study based in 2010 called Women, Women, Money, and Power. Okay, Women, Money, and Power. And they said that in 2010, the shift of money in our country shifted into the control of women. And uh, at the time, the, the former, uh, uh, the former uh, uh, tre uh, treasurer, she was the one who signs our money, and our notes, was Ana Escobedo Cabral. Oh, I love her. Uh, right? And so um, wh what have you seen, Marlene, uh, for women, to George's point, what have you seen for women? What are some of the barriers or what some of the, uh, the limited thinking that maybe perhaps that a lot of, a lot of women that you run across uh, may not th think that this is an industry or, or entrepreneurship is something that they could do because they're usually so career oriented, college career oriented. What's some of the, what are some of the ways that you unlock that conversation to many of the women that you run across? You know, Matt, I think so much has changed since 2010, uh, not just for women, but also just the insurance industry. I mean, imagine how much the demand for life insurance has increased since COVID. And I was sharing uh, with, the, with uh, some of you guys an article earlier about how insurance sales are moving online. And after a COVID year where we've had to develop and transition to working from Zoom, and I want to just think about what a blessing this is to so many women. I mean, for so many moms across the country, so many moms were not just working from home, but they were also teachers. They were also nurses. They were also homeschooling for almost an entire year. And we've been able to recruit ladies across the country. So the article was saying that 73% of people today are comfortable buying online, or that wouldn't be the case in 2010. Maybe in 2010, it would be harder for a mom. I can think of my sister-in-law. She works for AT&T for 20 years. She just got promoted here with PHP marketing director position, which is our broker position. And it was part-time. She works for AT&T full-time. She worked from home, has three kids, qualified for a Hawaii trip, and she did this while being part-time, but it was because of Zoom, because she's able to sell from Zoom, it's been able to condense time. So for women that think, you know, you can't have it all, you can't be a wife, you can't be a mother, um, I think Zoom has been a blessing for us to grow, and PHP as a whole, I mean, we're up in every measurable category, but I think this has just opened the gates to so many women that are seeking opportunity and saying, if I'm going to stay home, how can I still make an income for my family. So I think PHP provides the perfect platform for that for women. Was this the article you are uh, talking about here, the uh, the life insurance uh, sales moving online and the complexity? Yes, that that's right. Yes. That okay. So I, let, let's, let's unpack this real quick. So a recent survey 
of over 100 health life insurance actually found that 59% of industry pros believe that there's a major move online for consumers for the insurance purchase process for personal products like Life Health and PNC. So, uh, uh, um, so here it is. Is uh, is this where the article, the the stats? So 78 percent. Right at the bottom, a little bit lower. A little bit lower. Yeah, there you go. 73 percent, right, right there. Professionals believe they're they're comfortable searching for products online, and 61 percent of consumers are comfortable meeting with a broker or an agent online. So before this wasn't the case in 2010. If I had to meet with a client, either they would come to my office or I would go to their home. This might take you an hour or two with drive time, depending. Because in LA, we drive for everything, but today on Zoom, uh, you know, you can meet so many people in a short period of time. But people now are just comfortable with doing everything online and i think that's going to continue i do think that that this is the new normal i mean we see so many articles about companies that are just downsizing where they're asking do we still need office space and in the life insurance industry we do have offices across the country we do have the best training program but there are a lot of people that want the option to hey can i still work from home can i sell from home and we do have the platform for that george let me ask you this question you made a million dollars last year your, your income increased last year during the pandemic. Were well, a majority of your sales in your team sales from coast to coast. George, George for, for, for the sake of me having to say it and, and me, me speaking, where are your agents located in the United States, George? We have a strong position in California and then Texas uh, with Rodolfo and Ceci. They have a, a really strong position in Texas. Um, I want to say we have agents over around 20 20 states or so throughout the U.S. And, and really growing in Puerto Rico. You're, yeah, you're, Puerto Rico. Yeah, right? You're, one, of you're, top, you're, right. <laughs> one of the top earners this month. Uh, I want to say he just shy of $100,000. A brand new guy that came um, into the business working with Rodolfo and Ceci uh, in Puerto Rico. I think he's at ninety-three dollars or $94,000 this month. Wow. Say that one more time, George, for, for the people in the back. <laughs> so he's, he's new to PHP. His income this month is over $93,000 and he's new to PHP. In Puerto Rico. In Puerto Rico. Now, now I have a mountain in Puerto Rico for $93,000. Okay, go ahead. Now, Sorry. One thing I know about Puerto Ricans, man, they love getting together. I mean, are they meeting online or what, do you, what are you finding there in, in La Isla? Yeah, you know, it, it's technology is different in, in, in Puerto Rico, even though it's part of the US. Um, it's still a little bit slower on the technology side. But, you know, Zoom today is it's, you know, what's up is really popular with people in different different countries, you know, what's up. And um, and so a lot of times, you know, they use technology platforms like what's up um, over, you know, over the, the normal stuff that's out there. So Zoom, what's up, anything that's technology driven that can reduce speed and take away excuses. It's big for people because, you know, we're, we're even we're busier, you know, people are busy in life. So if they can jump into a Zoom and five minutes versus having to get ready, get in the car, drive traffic, find parking. And I think that uh, the shift that we made last year with Patrick, when the whole COVID thing happened, and he was like, we're going to do a Zoom. I think we were doing a Zoom every other day uh, with the SVPs, Matt. Was it every other day? <laughs> as soon as the pandemic, because everybody's eyes are like this. What are we doing with this pandemic? They're like, <laughs> everybody wanted to know what's going on. I think that was really the shift um, over communication. Uh, John Gordon says, in an absence of communication, negativity fills it, fear fills it. And so um, I think just being able to communicate like this with teams, connect with people. And I don't even think we, we, we've fully seen what's going to happen with PHP in the next 12, 24 months with the number of people we've been able to get into their households in small little cities and small little towns where maybe we didn't have an office. And they weren't getting access to local leadership because they couldn't. Now, now I can get into your your Zoom BOM and have you know coffee with Matt and get your mindset. That that was never accessible 18 months ago. So the the speed of leadership development, I think we're going to see the compounding effect of that over the next 12, 24 months uh, in the future. It's interesting that you said that because I want to ask Jasmine about that because Jazz, you're based here in Oak Brook, but the last three marketing directors that you help promote to run their own agency are outside of Roebrook. So care to share uh, with everybody here where you've promoted and where you've expanded due to Zoom babies. Yeah, I think it speaks to the power of our platform. I like to tell our agents, our PHP platform is pandemic proof. 
Um, it enables you the ability to physically be located here in Oak Brook, but scale your business nationwide. Um, and, and again, it's Matt, it's just a testament of um, of our platform here, we have, we're, we're considered a FinTech company, right? We, we are the future of the life insurance industry where we combine financial services with state-of-the-art technology and you give birth to a company called PHP. So uh, since the, in the midst of the pandemic, uh, to George's point, when many other companies were trying to figure things out and quickly pivot to Zoom, I think PHP was just ahead of, ahead of the game and we were able to quickly pivot and uh, expand our business nationwide. We met a, an in, incredible couple in Las Vegas, Claudia and Kennard Johnson, who's just $4,000 shy of making $50,000. They've been with us now for about seven months on a part-time basis. Uh, we've been able to build another agency owner, Shatara and Edmund Joseph out of Dallas, Texas. Um, and we've been able to, to uh, work with other agents. Our, our next couple up and coming, it's out of New Orleans, Louisiana, Kendrick and Brittany Williams. And just so we're clear, Matt, we met all of these couples through social media. Um, and so we have been working with them for months, uh, never physically attended a PHP office, never physically met us in person. Uh, they never physically attended a training. Um, their experience and lens of, of, of our company and our industry was strictly through, through Zoom. And so I think for uh, industries out there, if they're, if they're not pivoting um, uh, to more technology-based platforms, they will eventually get left behind. But I'm, I am blessed to say that I think here at PHP, we're ahead of the curve. It's funny that you mentioned that because uh, let me go to this quick article here on who survived. One year later, this is through Insurance Newsnet Magazine, one of my favorite magazines of the insurance industry. It talks about one year later, the ones who prospered. Can you guys see my screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. So I'm, I'm going to scroll down here real quick and uh, check this out. It says the, the life insurance sector, right, was due, was the growth of the independent channel, which is ours, which no single segment can call the shots, okay? So that, that's us. Now, the ones who were successful in building a different kind of practice tended to be those who are already on the outside looking in. Young people, women, and people call her just to name a few. So this goes right into the point of the message of PHP, uh, and and uh, the, the cool part about this too, uh, Jazz, is I get to work online with your guys through something we call internally called MD2B, where it's an overlapping type of leadership. So you provide leadership, but I'm also able to overlap and help build up your guys too as well. And to see what Kendrick and Brittany have been able to earn, I think they've earned like $5,000 this month part-time and yeah. Uh, yeah. I think fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 for the year. You know, uh, Shatara and, uh, and, and uh, Edmund and, and Claudia and Kennard out in Vegas. Like I gotten to know them because of not only you, yeah, but also through through Zoom. You, you know, know what I think is most exciting, Matt, is in in everyone that you name. I mean, these are human resource executives. These are mental health therapists, uh, accountants at J.P. Morgan Chase, uh, teachers. What's been so exciting for Ellis and I is to watch their their mindsets expand, right? Because these are people who much like me were told in order to attain financial freedom, right? You have to have a certain career title or a certain number of degrees. And these are people who uh, no experience in the industry who took a chance on themselves and said, listen, I'm willing to bet on myself because during the pandemic we're very uncertain financial times for over 50 million American families. And so um, I, that, that's, I think that's what excites me the most, Matt, is how entrepreneurship is really changing uh, the mindset of what it takes to, to, to become a millionaire, what it takes to be successful. And we actually have more power in our, in our own hands than we realize. And so to your point, I mean, being able to, to leverage leaders like yourself, like Marlene and, and like Palayo um, has allowed Ellis and I to really compress time uh, and and really uh, have our success, uh, your learning curve become our success curve. So it's just a continuous cycle of duplication. Great point, Jazz. Mar Marlene, I, you know, last year, um, <clears throat> your husband came out to Chicago with his coat <laughs> and hat <laughs> in November, right before uh, the pandemic hit with a gentleman named uh, Christian Oriano, right? Oriano. And um, they had eight property and casualty insurance agencies 
that uh, whatever you did, whatever you told them, they ended up selling it. And they went all in with you in, 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 in PHP building a insurance business on the PHP NC platform. Marlene, what was that conversation like? Because of course, you know, Floor, his wife, was part yeah. of it. And, and it, guys, if you know Floor and Christian Oriana, they're, this is a strong, this is a strong couple. So what was that conversation like with Floor? What was that conversation like with Christian to have them really consider the power of the life insurance industry in the PHP NC platform? Yeah, you know, something you were just mentioning right now was mentorship. It's something that uh, is so accessible here in PHP, but we take for granted uh, because it doesn't exist in other industries. Something as basic as, well, I remember when I got started here in PHP and they said, set up a field training and a trainer will take you to teach you how to do a basic presentation. I could not believe it because in real estate, nobody will teach you anything. There are so many people that do it. There's so much competition. They're not going to share with you their tricks and their trades. There's just no such thing. And, you know, something as, you know, like the MD2B call, my husband hosts what he calls the builder's call. Where do you get a chance to learn from a millionaire that has been doing this for many, many, many years that's willing to teach you? I met with another couple yesterday. They have an auto body business, and they're saying that they have to pay for a speaking fee, meaning if they want to get advice, they have to pay for a speaking consultation free fee from somebody that has already been doing that in that industry. And it's a couple hundred bucks per hour to just call somebody to say, hey, how can I do this and how can I do that? So Christian and Floyd, uh, either both in their 30s, they've made a lot of money. Uh, she had eight BNC businesses. He had auto body shops. But I think at the end of the day, they were looking for a company where they could scale. They were looking for a company where they could grow and they were looking for mentorship, something that Floyd said to me. And as a wife, I understood what she was saying. She says, you know what? I have my business. He has his business. Uh, we have four kids. They had just had a newborn. And when we get home, we barely speak to each other. So sometimes it isn't wow. about just how successful your business is. It's what's the quality of life that you're having um, as a couple, as a family. They have the most beautiful children on the planet. But I think they were just looking for an environment where they could grow as individuals and leadership. And they were also looking at the ownership opportunity with PHP, where they understand this is a growing company and they get a chance to participate in the growth. And coincidentally, she got an offer to sell her insurance offices. And this was right before COVID. So a couple of months before COVID and car insurance is not like life insurance where life insurance, people are more open to doing it online. Uh, she was more in the Latin market, the Hispanic market where they go there just, can you help me make a payment? So, so many of those offices were shut down for so many months where that industry took such a big hit. And I remember she called me, you know, she was very emotional and she said, thank you. I'm so glad I met you. I'm so glad I got recruited and I'm so glad that I had a chance to sell my business right before COVID. And, and truthfully, I mean, my heart goes out to how many business owners had to close up shop during, during the pandemic, how many, you know, mom and pop shops, how many restaurants, uh, and they didn't get that opportunity. But, you know, Christian and Florida were very fortunate. And this month, they're actually killing it. Um, they're, they're having a record breaking month, they're this close to being on Dream Team One. And what they want more than anything is to get a chance to work with our CEO directly, Patrick Bet David. And it's mind boggling to think that we have that opportunity. People around the country, value tainers would kill to get a chance to work with Patrick Bet David and here in PHP for the people that perform, you get to be on dream team call. You actually have his cell phone number. You can call him. He'll call you back. And I don't know about you, Matt, but I've never been billed by our CEO for a speaking fee. I've never been billed. Not to this day. Yeah, exactly. Uh, play, let's, let's talk about that real quick because, you know, uh, oftentimes like, for example, Marlene, just talk about them in a position of recreating themselves. They went from one lateral, field of property and casualty insurance now to the life insurance industry and in your organization george across the country you know you got a lot of people that normally would have never thought about getting involved in the life insurance industry i think a majority of your organization nobody ever had any previous life insurance so can you talk about that george about the process if one is looking on the outside looking at php agency they're saying can i really do this is it really looking this fun is is life insurance really potentially that easy to learn. There's less complexity than what I think it is. George, talk to us about that. I think that has to do with um, the way that insurance is marketed and how many people around us actually even do life insurance that we even know and what we see in their lifestyle. 
because growing up, my, myself growing up, uh, and, and most of my guys, none of us really knew anybody that life insurance around us. I, I was looking at a, a statistic earlier, and we trained on this last night, and it talked about what percentage of agents are different ethnicities. And it's 71% Caucasian, 14.8% Hispanic, 7.9% Black or African American, 4.5% Asian, 1.6% unknown, and then there's 0.2 native Indian and uh, Alaskan native. And so in my family, like we just didn't have people we hung out with that were life insurance agents. And I remember one time I, I, I go to my uh, dad's friend's house and he was an insurance agent and I, he had a ranch, uh, he had horses, he had a, like a 2000 square foot gym, his house on the top of the hill. And I'm just like, dad, what, what does this guy do? Like, wh why don't you get a, Why don't you work? You know, why don't we, can we, can we do this? And when you get exposed to the lifestyle of the insurance industry, when you see people that have a residual income of, you know, $10,000 a month, that's not a lot of money in PHP for somebody to have a residual $10,000 a month. But how many people in America even make $10,000, whether they get out of bed or not. And no, the insurance industry, it doesn't do a good job of marketing itself of the lifestyle of what an insurance agent is and the freedom, the flexibility, the residual income, the leadership development, the fact that you're not just making an income, but you're building the value to your business down the road as well, that you can transfer it to your family, that you can really build something like that. So I think, I think the problem for us on why most of us never even considered doing life insurance and definitely didn't come from it is because we never saw anybody around us in the industry that necessarily look like us that, that we can connect to and relate to energy wise and, and um, personality wise, where we were like, dude, I would, I like, I, that guy's got a great life. She's got a great life. They got a great life. I'd love, I'd love to do that. So no, you know, uh, our guy, Cindy comes from uh, nursing. Uh, uh, Terrace is a former a terrorist at Fred and Chrissy Terrace. They just moved to North Carolina to open an office oh, did they? Uh, nice. last week. Yep. They're expanding. We're about to uh, huh? We're about to Raleigh. Ra Raleigh. Raleigh. Area. Wow. Yeah. Or Carrie, Carrie or Raleigh. I get confused, but they're in North Carolina. He was a bartender. You know, she was a server. Both have degrees, by the way. Uh, went to, went to Cindy, uh, uh, Chrissy has a degree from UCLA in journalism. Fred has a degree uh, uh, as well. So both educated people, but got into the restaurant business because in California, you work at a nice restaurant. You can make a six figure income being a server, which is crazy. Uh, more than some people that, you know, have degrees. And, um, and then the, when the restaurant industry crashed, you know, they were looking to see how do we reinvent ourselves? And they got into insurance because Michael Robert Tassio prospect to Fred said, Hey man, you keep your options open. And Fred's like, what do you do? Um, they're about to be half a million dollar earners. Uh, Alan Alicia Diaz come from IT. Uh, they were looking for a mentor. They were making a six figure income, you know, uh, uh, both have degrees, but they're like, is this it? Is this like the best we're going to do and, and just kind of live an okay life? Um, you know, you got Elvis Okafor, the guy comes from engineering quarter million dollar earner okay. blessing comes from being a registered nurse, $300,000 earner. So no, a lot of our guys didn't come from this industry, but when somebody shows you, you can own your own business. Cause I know we have people watching this that are not just in PHP, but also people that are like, who is PHP okay. when it comes to saying, you know, where can I go own my own business on a part-time basis? I don't have to leave my job. I can meet some really good people. I can get mentored. I can get coached. I can get encouraged. I can get help. And then you can, you can test this out and get a license in a week or two and make a thousand, 2000, 3000, 5,000 your first month with, with a couple hundred dollar expense of getting a license that teaches you about money anyways. Um, I, I think it's a, a great industry that is unmarketed in a massive way. Yeah, 100% agree. Uh, Jasmine, uh, you know, Marlene was talking about mentorship. George talked about mentorship. For you, what has been the power of mentorship for you? Why is that so important? You know, I, I was raised in a small suburb, really small, called Bellwood, just about 20 miles west outside of Chicago. And raised by two hardworking parents. My mom worked for Social Security Administration for 35 years, and my dad still is employed with People's Gas. And um, I remember even as a young girl, never being exposed to uh, wealthy people. And not just, you know, uh, people of color, right, with wealth, but just wealthy people in general, Matt. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. everyone that I knew was a blue-collar worker, um, and so like most African American children growing up, I, you know, I was encouraged to further my education and, and for that to be the ticket for me to attain 
um, financial uh, and independence. And so I think life was going as planned. You know, I was captain of cheerleading team, student council, National Honor Society, and then the unexpected happened, Matt, and I became pregnant at the age of 17. And I just remember the sheer devastation um, and, and shame that came over me. And I remember going from being a young lady who had so many aspirations. I wanted to attend London School of Political Science, Matt. <laughs> I had never been out of the country, never, didn't have a passport. I don't even know where this came from, but I wanted to attend London School of Political Science. And, and I remember going back to my college advisor and I said, hey, these are the schools that I'm looking to apply to. And I remember the look on her face and she says, no, 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 no we're actually gonna transfer you onto a track for you to pursue a trade. So she wanted me to exchange any aspirations for post-secondary education uh, for me to you know, possibly um, pursue some, some sort of trade. And I said, no, I'm, I'm telling you, I can do this. I can still you know, graduate high school. I can still go off to college. And long story short, Matt, she wasn't, she wasn't wrong in that because um, CDC reports fewer than uh, half of teenage mothers actually complete high school by the age of 22. So it wasn't as if she was wrong for you know thinking that that um, that I, I I wouldn't be able to do it. And what I found out so so something boiled deep down within Matt. And I said, you know what? I sat down with my parents and I said, this is what I'm gonna do. I, I know that I can do it. And with their support, Matt, I want to be clear, I had two people who believed in me. It was my mom and dad. Everyone else around me, my principals, my teachers. I mean, it was a miracle at that time for me to graduate high school. And I ended up graduating early and getting a full ride scholarship to college and, um, and raising my daughter with me hand in hand. It was, you know, me and my daughter. And I remember um, in college securing an opportunity to work on Capitol Hill for Congressman Davis. And it was then that I was introduced to the power of mentorship. Um, I, you know, I ended up meeting the chief of staff for Congressman Davis in a bathroom at the Congressional Black Caucus, true story. And uh, one week later was working on Capitol Hill. And um, I am, you know, my entire trajectory was birthed from the power of mentorship. Sir Isaac Newton says, if I can see further, it's because I stand on the shoulders of giants. And you know, prior to me entering into entrepreneurship and partnering with PHP, I had always had compartmentalized mentors, right? Like I had someone that I would go to for financial ad advice and spiritual advice and physical, right, health advice. And I always say, for me, PHP encompassed all of that. You know, um, for for you, you and and Sheena being. Uh, my direct leadership and mentor and business coaches here in the industry, you guys have counseled us on all areas, <laughs> you know, there are no topics off limit. And so um, mentor, I, you know, I always say a mentor does a, a great mentor does three things. Number one, they stretch your vision of what's possible, right? So you should begin to see expand. So with, with me being able to get out of my environment um, and really define the odds, um, making an exception that, I, I, that I'm going to go against the status quo, um, I started to see what was possible. I started to change my associations. I started to be around people who spoke a different language. My identity expanded. Uh, and another thing, uh, the second thing that a great mentor will do um, is obviously, you know, they, they don't conceal best practices. They share with you step-by-step -step strategies and formulas on, on how they became successful, more importantly, how you could duplicate their success at a faster pace. And that's what Ellis and I have been able to do here. And I think number three, ultimately, and Matt, I think number three is the most important um, for me, it's accountability. Uh, a strong mentor is someone that holds you accountable. So, you know, today marks the end of Q1 of 2021. And at the beginning of the year, so many people had New Year's resolutions and write this wish list. If I'm going to get in shape, I'm going to save money. I'm going to get my credit score up. I'm going to start that business. I'm going to go back to school. And 
for a lot of people, maybe they've forgotten about those New Year's resolutions, but when you have a right, the right mentor in your corner, uh, they're holding you accountable week in, week out. Uh, they're giving you step-by-step -step advice, uh, but they're also pouring into to you to become a well-rounded leader. So that is the impact of mentorship for me. Awesome, Jasmine. Uh, by the way, you're watching the PHP Agency podcast here, the second episode of PHP Agency's podcast here, uh, live streaming right now. This is not recorded. This is live streaming right now on YouTube. And uh, guys, we are, we're fired up about this. And uh, I want to give you guys some quick shout outs. If you're constantly uh, commenting and engaging in our live chat on YouTube, I'm going to give you some quick shout outs here in a minute. But I would love for you to share this podcast on Twitter, on your Facebook page, on your LinkedIn, tag PHP Agency. And if you do, we're going to be looking at it. I'm going to be looking at it. And I got a little gift for you. For those of you that share this podcast the most, by the conclusion of this, we're going to, we're going to tally up. We're going to, we're going to count those names. But I want to give a gift from my desk to you, which is a book from our CEO founder, PHP Agency, which is your next five moves. This is a Wall Street Journal number one best-selling book. And in addition to that, he's also signed it because I was on Patrick's podcast on 9-11, which is my wife's birthday, and uh, Patrick signed it. So it's going to go from me to you, a signed copy on 9-11 from Patrick Bed David's book here, your next five moves for the one that shares this podcast the most and tag PHP agency put it on Twitter put it on your social media put it on your Facebook put it on your LinkedIn share it on your profiles let's get this up and I want to see if we can crack 300 live viewers of this podcast so Marlene I want to kick it back to you you know last week we shared a video from our amazing trip in Hawaii we had uh, close to 400 like 450 of our uh, top people over there and oftentimes people, you know, think about, you know, uh, life insurance and the life insurance industry, but it's very important too about what life insurance policies do. And uh, you've got a, you got a story that we shared from our Hawaii trip. We just went public at our video from, from the complete Hawaii uh, trip. And you can check this out on our PHP agency, YouTube channel. You can check out the entire video. Cause it was just a quick 30 second uh uh, a tease last we have the full episode now up on a youtube channel php agency but marlene uh, a sobering story here real quick uh, that you'd like to share about uh, really the power of what life insurance policies do would you care to share yes that? thank you thank you Matt. yes uh definitely a powerful video a, a roller coaster of emotions and you know it's so funny i've been life licensed since 2009 and I've sold a lot of insurance policies myself, but I've never had a death claim that I've had to pay out myself to this day. And, and I don't know, I tell my clients, I said, no, none of my clients tend to die. So, you know, you want to definitely, you know, sign up with me, but I haven't experienced that uh, yet as, a, as an agent personally. But um, e even so, we see it all around us in PHP and, you know, just in general, you hear stories. So we had a trip to Hawaii. This was a company trip last month. And um, we lost two of our brokers on the trip. And this is just a shout out for people that like to travel. Uh, they met a local on the island of Maui and the local took them to waterfalls that are not on the, any of the tour maps. You know, something that only, actually, it's actually, it's the sacred Indian grounds is what it was. And there was warnings for flash floods. Now I'm from California. I don't know, you know, people watching across the country, we don't know what flash floods are because we don't have that kind of rain in California. And two of our guys, uh, uh, you know, we, we lost. And one of them actually uh, was there with his wife and twin daughters, one year old twin daughters. And um, it was definitely an emotional month for myself and my husband because uh, one of these agents, I mean, one was a newly promoted marketing director, um, but the second agent, I think we've, we've mentored and known since he was 19 years old. So we saw him transition, you know, from a 19 year old to a husband, to a father, and we just never know what's gonna happen. And he was so excited on this trip, but the one thing I know that he must be so proud of himself for was the fact that he had an insurance policy for his family. Uh, and 
for his girls because I know that was very important, uh, you know, and, and to promote this to agents, you know, doesn't matter what age you are, doesn't matter, you know, if you have children or not, because the second agent, he didn't have children, but thank God he did have an insurance policy. So uh, his parents were able to, to grieve, his family was able to grieve. And that's just the importance of what we do. But it definitely, it, it hit home and it was more, um, it was more emotional. And I think everybody that I talked to, I conveyed the message of the importance of life insurance a little differently because just have the image of, you know, his two daughters in my head constantly. So it was very unfortunate, but these stories do happen. And thank God uh, they were insured with our, our carriers, which are the best carriers in the whole industry. Marlene, thank you for sharing that story. I know it's very uncomfortable for, you know, uh, you know, for, for it's, it's got to be uncomfortable for you to sh share that because, you know, this is such a very near and dear couple to you. Uh, but thank you for your strength in being able to share that story because it's so important. Marlene, in, in your experience, how many times have you run across uh, your typical client in the multicultural middle class that would not have, would not have purchased life insurance had it not been for your conversation sitting down with them? Oh my gosh, all the time. I mean, a, a lot of our clients are Latinos and Latinos were very hard headed. I mean, I'll tell you, my dad, it took me over two years to convince my dad to get insurance because, you know, Latinos were very superstitious. Me, va me, me vas a echar la sal. That means it's bad luck, you know, and uh, thank God I, I harassed my dad and I said, you're going to get insurance because I thought I can't be an insurance agent and not have my own family insured. And and um, he did apply, he got approved, and within a year he had a stroke and, you know, he didn't walk the same, he didn't talk the same. And I'm grateful that I, you know, I was, I just pressed on the subject and he did qualify. But I think it is cultural because in Latin America, life insurance is not a thing. In Latin America, you pay off your house and that's the only form of security. And it's funny because in Latin America, they don't believe in credit cards. If you don't have money to buy a house, you just don't. So they don't have this debt, but life insurance isn't a concept that is talked about amongst Latinos. And I think it's something that's very underserved. And it, here in PHP, they also call us paisas helping paisas because half the company is Latino. It's a growing demographic, but I think uh, as Latino culture, we don't talk about money. We don't talk about insurance. We don't talk about financial education. I'll tell you, my mother was a housekeeper her entire life. And when you're self-employed like that, there is no pension, there is no 401k, there is no disability, there is no such thing. So, uh, th th you know, because of our agency, because of our agents, we get to be the middle person between middle income America, you know, a lot of the Latino culture and the insurance carriers that we do the marketing for. And that's why it's so important for us to grow, to expand and to open more offices and to do this via Zoom so that we can reach that audience and, you know, provide that financial literacy. And I'm excited because I know tomorrow starts the beginning of Financial Literacy Month and we're going to have a national campaign, you know, nationwide. And to see how much uh, PHP is growing in forms of diversity, I know we're, the American Samoan community is growing yes. um, here in PHP. So to see that growing, it's exciting to see how we're able to tap different communities that have been underserved for a very long time. George, George, I'm going to kick this off for you too as well, because again, you serve a multicultural demographic, but I want to talk to you from a position of, of marketing, okay? And so, you, you, George, um, you've been with PHP, you're co-founder of PHP, October 2009. George, uh, George, I think you're the first official code number of, of PHP. Am I, am I accurate in saying that? I know you're not Mexican, but I was inaccurate saying that. But <laughs> I think we're number three. I think it's Pat, Jen, and then it's myself. So yeah. Well, it's the first non-executive. Yes. Yeah. First non-executive. Yes. So, okay. So your, your official field code number yes. of PHP. Okay. George, uh, I, it, let, let's, let's make no bones about it. We are in an organization that recruits, we build, we create leadership development amongst the ranks. Uh, and for people to build their own um, uh, 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 brand. So there's many different ways you probably could have been recruited into the insurance industry. But people saying, you know what, George, you know, let's put up a pretty website and we'll drive traffic to an online site for you and get leads for you to sell. Or, or, or you could have done what I did for 14 years, which is put 5,000 pieces of mail in, uh, of direct mail in four or five different zip codes and bring them to a dinner seminar. Or I could buy a list of leads. Why has our platform allowed you to reach a demographic that's not going to go to a website, that's not going to go to a dinner seminar, that's not going to read their mail, that's not going to pick up their phone to, to be cold called life insurance? 
How has it impacted you from a marketing standpoint? When I got started in the business, they said, you know, hey, you got to reach out to people that you know. Um, and that was different for me because, you know, I wasn't used to marketing myself. When you, if you, if anybody asks you, you know, where do you work? You have no problem saying, oh, I work for this company. I work for Google. I work for this. I, I used to work at uh, Olive Garden. Okay. Uh, Red Lobster. Um, Bono Fiesta. What did Joy say? Where's so I used to be a server at Olive Garden. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you still got it, man. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, but we, we tell people what we do all day. We tell people we go to school. We tell people, you know, everything about us. Uh, we, people will tell people their personal problems going on in their personal life. But then when it comes to actually talking about something that matters or talking about something that's your business or talking about, you know, hey, I started a business. I'm in this industry. People are sometimes hesitant to do that. And uh, one of the challenges I had is I didn't know a whole lot of people. They said, you know, reach out to 25 people. I think I put nine people on the list. Three of them were my family members, my parents, three siblings, and three best friends. So it was like, who do I talk to? I'm 18 years old. I don't know a lot of people. Um, and, I, and that was that was a challenge, you know? And, and so I said, well, what can I do? What can I do to, to build a business? And I remember coming to trainings. I'm so grateful that there was a training system. It was my gas station because sometimes as an entrepreneur, you know, you're giving your very best that you can at whatever you think your best is at that moment. And, uh, and you can be fatigued and you can be discouraged and you can go through a hard time. And, you know, that's why most entrepreneurs uh, fail, right? They, they lose hope. They, they get discouraged. Um, and that training every Tuesday, every Saturday, being around Patrick, being around other leaders, being around you guys, you know, th those meetings keep you going. They give you hope. They give you encouragement to go get better and talk to people. And I had to overcome a lot of fears um, in terms of prospecting. So I tried, but I tried everything. I, I, I did. I tried. Uh, I remember I went to the mall. I put uh, advertisements on everybody's cars. Uh, I got security to call me. Uh, <laughs> and you got to come pick this up. <laughs> this is loitering or something. I'm like, ah, shoot. Um, I tried. Um, I tried buying numbers and calling people when I was brand new because I didn't know anybody. And that was horrible. You know, these leads of people calling strangers that everybody else was trying to call. Um, I tried building a website and you try to get people to your website. Good luck with that. Um, because there's no relationship. There's no trust. There's no warmth. It's just cold. It's just a sale. It's just a transaction. And people don't do business that way. Um, and I, tr I tried it all. And I tried to find every way of building the business besides, you know, prospecting. Because that's where people face the most rejection. And uh, as much as I tried to avoid it, I realized the thing that you're avoiding is the thing you need to do. And, and uh, I started prospecting people. And then I realized, you know, I don't know a lot of people, but I can meet somebody. And that person has a whole life, you know, of people that they know and that they're connected to. And you never know who you're going to meet. Um, and there's a book called The Tipping Point that talks about six degrees of separation. Um, you know, and I recruited Cindy and Cindy had four siblings. All of them were professionals. All of them were married. All of them were had kids. And all of a sudden we did like 20 policies that month. And it was my first time saying, wow, the power of building through people that one person can change your life. One agent can change your life. And I remember this quote that says, you know, one client will never bring you a thousand recruits, but one recruit, one new agent can bring you a thousand clients. And that's mm -hmm. such a, a, a true comment that people can, you can get into any market you want to by, you know, four questions, by complimenting somebody. And this business, a lot of things that I thought I was learning in sales, they're just not sales skills, they're life skills. It's how you communicate with your spouse, how you lead your children, how you work through issues with your family, because this business teaches you, you know, leadership development. But I had to learn how to talk to people. I had to build up my confidence in that area. Um, I was very shy. I was an introvert. Um, it was just the way I was kind of, I was raised. But, uh, but I also didn't want that lifestyle of uh, a, a person that, that didn't, you know, communicate, that didn't reach out, that didn't build a business because you got to, you, to have a great life, it's hard to do that in a small world. You got to kind of expand yourself and the people you meet. And um, this business really exposed me to that. And now with social media, it, it helps because that's the whole purpose of social media is to connect people. I think the people that are getting recruited to the insurance industry today are coming into building a business today we live in a world that's perfect because every single one of the Instagrams, the LinkedIn, everything out there is designed to connect people and people are expecting you to message them. People are expecting you to reach out. People are expecting, they're posting comments. Why? They're posting pictures. Why? Because they want somebody to comment on it. And 
And if, if somebody can really understand that and just be interested in building genuine relationships with people and they're consistent every single day, um, and you know what you do, posting every single day, two, three posts, being relative, commenting, being up to date with current events, um, adding value, sharing books people read, sharing articles, um, you can really build a presence for yourself where you start to become, I, if I want to watch the news today, if I want to know like what's going on, I go to the podcast with Pat. Cause I'm like any current event going on in the world, I'm about to catch, right yes. now. you know, and that's the way that, that millennials, that's the way that new people that want to be, um, educated are, are getting digesting information like Marlene said. So I think, I think we're in an agency, Ricky and Erica, with what they've done with social media coming into this business, not being salespeople, but you know, making $900,000 in, you know, four or five years, just through social media, who in the world wants to go buy leads and do all that stuff when you can just really connect with people and build real friendships. So hundred percent, George, you know, you're, you're reminding me of a young man because we have a whole team here from our Memphis office, our, uh, uh, Edward and Jimmy Musgrove up here from Memphis. And one of the guys who's a warehouse supervisor who does know how to build connections and relationships, his first month license, he's making $13,500 plus, and we still got a commission cycle for today to wrap up the month. So it's exciting what's happening in PHP agency. Again, all from not buying leads, all from not having to put a, um, a website or direct mail pieces in five different zip codes. So therefore people can hopefully call you or co go to your seminar. And, and as I wrap stuff up, guys, I'm gonna go with Jasmine, George, and have Marlene wrap up here. But I wanna know your final thoughts. I wanna know your final thoughts about, uh, of, of course, for Jasmine, Women Histories Month, and, you know, in terms of, per of perspective from a, from a woman. Uh, but, you know, for, for those of you who's been checking this out, I promise you I'll give you some shout outs, but uh, um, some shout outs here, as I promise here, uh, Cal, uh, Cal L, uh, Addy Gray Johnson, Noah Page, thank you for sharing the, uh, the podcast, uh, Brenda Mina, uh, Beryl Cipriani, Raul Calito, Michael Shelton, Sean Johnson, Olds, uh, uh, Jafar Nika, uh, Calvin Rhyme, Janice Killingsworth, uh, Nestor Maravi. Uh, Jose uh, Shan Sanchez, thank you for sharing this on Facebook. Um, Consuelo Castanuela, thank you for sharing our podcast. Jane Lopez, Ali Khalid, and Quinnette Allen, Ari Nayemba, Tanea Colossal. I feel like a leader's bulletin here. But uh, uh, thank you so much, Shatar Walker Joseph. We we're just talking about Shatar Jasmine. She's uh, sharing it. No company does it better. Sharing now. Thank you, Shatara. Uh, be happy, love others, lead by example. Thank you for sharing our podcast. So Jazz and Suazo, as we wrap up, final thoughts. You know, I think um, I started out saying that today um, concludes the month for Women's History Month, but I, I want to be very clear and send a message to all of the women watching around the world that uh, as women, we make history every day. Uh, we have an opportunity every morning that we wake up to progress, uh, to, to be better than who we were the previous day. And so if, if I'm watching this and I'm a woman, uh, maybe I'm in the industry, maybe I'm not in the industry. Um, and if you can just remember that fire that you once had inside of you, you know, I remember as a young girl, uh, my cousins and I would sit on, on the curb mad. And this is what you do when you don't have a lot of money and cars would run by and you would say, that's my car. No, that's my car. <laughs> and you would say, that's my house. And one day I'm going to live in a house like this. And something happens, women. Um, where as we evolve into um, adulthood, we forget how to dream. Uh, we forget how to go after the lifestyle uh, and, and the person that we once said we wanted to become. And so I want all of the ladies here watching this to know that not only are we as women uh, revolutionizing the life insurance industry with over half of a PHP agents being women, the highest income earner being a woman, um, and, and the incredible platform that PHP Ladies is providing, giving all of us a voice with our monthly newsletters. I just want to leave the women with an important um, note to just remember that you already have everything in you that it takes to be successful. The only thing that's stopping you from discovering the next best version of you is you. And I encourage you to make a decision to not just celebrate the history of women and the evolution of women in our country uh, for one month, but go make history every day. And so um, that, that's my message, whether you are a single parent, a married woman, um, a recent college graduate, retiree, right, empty nester, uh, you have a chance. Uh, we're ending Q1 2021, entering into Q2, you have a chance to recreate yourself. The year is still young, so go out and kill it.
Outstanding, Jasmine. Thanks for being on the show. George, your final thoughts. Um, Matt, I'm super grateful. I think as I've gotten older, I'm going to be 35 this year in July. And I look back in my life and, and how many times uh, God got me through a situation that I was literally, I had no control over. And I'm like, I'm doing my very best in this area, but this is the best I can do. And I think it's so important to have like faith in your life of things, things can be better, that things are going to get better. But I also think it's, you know, you have to get better. I know there's a lot of agents on here that uh, you got into PHP or you're looking at this because you have a dream. And, and, and if I wouldn't have found this business, I don't know where my life would have went. I, I don't. People like to take the credit and say, man, I'm amazing. I'm this, I'm that. But you got to go back and look at the moments where you weren't who you are today. And who was there at those moments that helped you get to the next moment? Who was there that kept you when you wanted to quit? Who was there that had a tough conversation with you? And for me, you know, it was Patrick. And I was blessed. Uh, one of the greatest blessings I'll ever have in my life is to have met Patrick when I was 19 years old. And for some of you guys, you're like, man, I wish I could be mentored, you know, by Patrick. And the beautiful part is if you're in this company, you can earn and you can fight for that to get that mentorship. But there's so many leaders in this company and it starts with your marketing directors and being the number one person closest to them. And then from there, it's saying, how do I get, how do I become my, my vice president's number one person? How do I get around my SVP? Because that person, you know, they're in a season of their life that they're, everything is changing for them. Income's changing, lifestyle's changing. And when you're around people that are changing, your life changes. And I, I plateaued and I wanted to, to, to end with this. There are many times in my life I've plateaued and it always came back down to one of four things. Every time I hit a goal, I didn't set a new goal. Not every time I've hit a goal, but the times I plateaued, I didn't set a new goal. And so what's your goal specifically? We had a call right before this with some of our agents and uh, the guy gave me his number. And I said, when did that become your, your, your no matter what number? And it was a year ago. And I said, so in a year, you haven't raised your no matter what. And I said, it's time that we raised that. We changed that. Number two was poor, bad associations. You know, sometimes there are people that they're not bad people, but, and you have to understand the difference between a bad association and a bad person, right? There are good people, but maybe they're a bad association for you at this season in your life when you're trying to change, because maybe they're not in a moment of their life that they're, they're trying to change. So there could be guilt, there could be distraction that's coming there. And it's not a bad person. It's just not what you need at this moment. Uh, number three are bad habits. You know, a lot of times people have bad habits. If you said, what's one thing I can change right now? You already know one or two or three. And I remember Marvin Del Valle, he said something to me, he says, the next biggest growth that you're going to experience in life isn't going to be inside of a book anymore. It's going to be inside of yourself and being honest with yourself, getting to know yourself and what parts of you, you really need to change and work on. And that's the same thing. Patrick's told me that's the same thing. You know, if you read books, um, and, and so that those are, you know, the, the, the last thing is, is personal development. Every time I plateaued, it was, a, it was a lack of personal development. Um, so those are the things that for me would change my life. And uh, I just hope that people watching this call, um, that you go through those things and, and you figure out which one of those areas you need to get better in. Because this year, uh, we're at around 1.2, 1.3, 1.2, I think, last 12 months rolling. In income. Income. income, yeah. And uh, uh -huh, 1.2 million. And... And this year we started the year and we said, we're going to go make $2 million. How? I don't know. But I just know that the same version of me that they got to a million dollars isn't the same version that's going to make $2 million. I have to honestly change. Um, but to be able to be in an industry like this where you can put down on a piece of paper, I want to make 100000 in the next six months. And you could, or I want to make a quarter million. I want to be debt free. I want to buy a home. I want to retire my wife. I want to take a vacation with my family. I want this summer to be different. I want to go to Italy. You, like you could put down any dream on a piece of paper and you have a business where it could deliver if you deliver. I'm just grateful to be in this industry, to Patrick, to, to Marlene, Jose, to all my sidelines, to you and Sheena, uh, to the Swazos, to, to Unity, to all the, the people I get to work with every single day. Um, I'm just in a season of gratitude. And um, thank you. Thank you for, for the show. Thank you for hosting. George, thank you so much for being part of the show. Again, if you are in the Chicagoland area, reach out to Jasmine Suazo. If you are in the LA area, reach out to George Palayo. We put his links up here during the show. Uh, Marlene, my co-host, uh, uh, wrapping up the show, your final thoughts. Thank you. Thank you. I, you know, as everybody was talking, I was just reminiscing, thinking, wow, I got recruited in 2009 as a 23 year old. And initially my thoughts were, can I get licensed? Can I sell a policy? 
can I recruit just 10 people a month? Because I knew I didn't want to sell the rest of my life. I knew I wanted to have an organization. I wanted to have my own agency. And to think, you know, how blessed I am and how PHP has taught me not just to, you know, learn from selling insurance, but to grow an agency. This year, my husband and I are positioning ourselves to recruit 30,000 people and do $30 million in production. And I'll never forget when Pat said, um, when I crossed my first $10 million a year uh, revenue that TGA organization, uh, uh, you know, generated, Patrick said, Marlene, you are officially a CEO and I remember I was kind of shocked thinking, you know, I'm, I'm an immigrant, you know, <laughs> I, my high school education is North Hollywood High and that's it. I said, how am I a CEO? And to see how it's been able to compound. And we have a saying and that's, we're not here to be kings, we're here to be king maker. So I'm excited to just mentor, to help the next generation get started here in PHP because this platform is growing and people always, I, I have a saying and my saying is you can, everybody has their own movie in their head in their life and you can choose to be the leading lady or you can choose to be the supporting cast. So for the people that want to be the star of the show, I want to be the leading lady. I want to be the leading man of my own movie uh, we can't wait to we can't wait to meet you we can't wait to mentor you we can't wait to travel the world with you and we can't great uh to grow this organization with you because php agency will be the number one organization in the entire financial industry so i'm super excited for that guys you heard from marlene guy 10 again reiterate the leader of the 50 percent team she wanted to make sure we all knew that right. tga and uh, again, if you're in Orange County, Santana, California, reach out to Marlene Gaetan. We're sharing her links and her Instagram profiles here as you're watching the live stream. And folks, as I'm wrapping up the show, a couple of thoughts here, a couple of announcements. Uh, again, if you're watching this podcast and you're not part of PHP agency, you're looking into getting involved in the insurance industry to build your own agency. We are the best compensation plan for the agency builder. If you're a builder, listen, I was a producer at one point. I was a producer for 14 years. I was at 130, 140% contract, buying leads, doing dinner seminars. I was a producer, but it wasn't until Patrick Bet David in the PHP agency model of which Marlene Gaetan and George Palaio officially co-founded back in October, 2009, that I started thinking like a builder and I had a 75% contract as well as the bonuses on top of that. My wife and I were able to earn over $1.8 million here in the last 12 months over $6.5 million in the last six years of being part of PHP agency. How? Because of the agency building system and actually running a business. Marlene just mentioned she's, uh, uh, they're on track to making 30 million, they're on track to building a $30 million business this year. If you were just to take a slice of what Marlene Gaetan and her husband, Jose, was able to build. If you just take a slice of what George Palai, if you just isolated their numbers, they would rival the production of insurance companies insurance companies. And so if you want to say, Hey, I want to be a start of the show as Marlene was mentioned earlier, and you've been overworked, you've been underpaid, you've been overwhelmed, you've been undervalued. And generally you're not financially happy. The pandemic has hit you hard. You haven't had income insurance. Mm -hmm. You win a stimulus check. You're, you're, you're in a PPP uh, way. You're an entrepreneur. You're still waiting for a PPP uh, loan uh, opportunity. PHP agency has proven itself to be not only in a pandemic and recession proof industry, but a recession pandemic proof platform. And we're here to build the next leaders and leadership of PHP agency. The company's got a budget right now of over $5 million to pay our top 30 guys, exotic cars of Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini. We've got some crazy things going on. Uh, we have a crazy event happening a large, big event in Las Vegas. We rented out the entire MGM Grand Arena. It is ours. And one of the people that uh, agreed to perform is a gentleman I met a few years ago at the White House. His name is Joe Coy. But Joe Coy has agreed to perform on the platform of PHP AD. So we're going to get Joe Sapp. Joe Sapp will be performing on the PHP AD platform. Joe Sapp, who's got major Netflix specials out there. Uh, already and a phenom in the world of comedy. And if you want to add a slide, and by the way, we're about to make another crazy announcement here this coming month as we kick off Financial Literacy Month from our CEO, Patrick Bedeva, who also will be coming to our big event in Las Vegas at the MGM Grand Arena. So for those of you out there, thank you for watching this show. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, P 
PHP Agency. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you subscribe to the P. So make sure you click like to the PHP Agency Facebook page. And if you seriously want to get connected and you're in Oak Brook, connect with Jazz and Suazo, Chicago, connect with Jazz and Suazo. If you're in LA, Culver City, connect with George Pillai, where he's based out of. If you're in Orange County, Southern California, connect with Marlene Gaetan. They can directly and indirectly help you with inside their offices and organizations to help you usher this new chapter for you. So that being said, guys, on behalf of Jasmine Suazo, on behalf of George Palayo, on behalf of my co-host, Marlene Gaetan. And by the way, next week, we'll be covering a very interesting topic about how the, uh, the President Biden plan, the infrastructure plan, may be affecting the middle class. How? Come check that out next week on episode three of the PHP Agency Podcast. Again, I have my co-host, Marlene Gaetan. I'm your mighty smart guy, host of the show. And until we meet again, continue to help people, continue to love people, and continue to change your lives today. That being said, guys, bye-bye, bye-bye. Thanks for tuning in.